All right, hello, seventh period. Um, I know we ran out of time and I felt like there was just too many subtleties here for us to just leave it and maybe rely on you guys just to get everything you need from the notes. So we're gonna run through examples three and four real quickly and hopefully that'll help with anything that you might be having issues with. So here is example three and let's go with some blue here. And the first thing to note is how the problem is presented. Anytime you have a pi here or anything lacking a de degree symbol, you are talking about radians. So you are in radians here. And that makes a difference because you don't want your answers to be in degrees. So they want you to find the value of the angle theta that makes each statement true. All right, so cosine theta is radical three over two. Of course, you have to kind of know your unit circle but at least you can note that cosine is an x coordinate and as such it is going to be positive in two spots or in two quadrants of your unit circle it's going to be positive in quadrant one and it's going to be uh, positive in quadrant four so those are the two angles that you need so uh, if you know your unit circle well enough Radical 3 over 2 is just a little smaller than 1, which would put you right at 0 radians. So this is going to be um, rotated up to pi over 6. All right, so that's your quadrant 1. And then you've got one in quadrant 4, which would be roughly the same distance in the other direction, or the same amount of rotation. And so you could do negative pi over 6, but they want it to be between 0 and 2 pi. So the coterminal for that is 11 pi over 6. So there they are. Theta equals those two angles. And this would be your quadrant 4. All right? So that's what that is telling you. So if we come over to B and they are talking about tangent, and you have to think about tangent. Remember, that is the ratio of y over x, which is sine over cosine. And this tangent value is negative. So tangent is not negative in the first quadrant because uh, sine and cosine are both positive. And it's also not negative in the third quadrant because both sine and cosine are neg uh, negative, so negative over negative is a positive. But that means that we have values for that in quadrant two and quadrant four. And the way that I do tangent may be a little bit out of the stone age, but I figure I need something with y over x. And the y value's gotta have the radical three because when you simplify that fraction, you will be left with radical three. So how about if we have one half, a negative one half, and radical three over two, or we could have one half as a positive and negative radical three over two. Because if you take any of these and you make your tangent, it's going to be, um, if you put this y over x, you'll have square root of three over two divided by negative a half, or you can switch the signs for the other one. That'll be radical three over two times negative two over one, and you can see cancel, cancel, and you get the target that you want. That'll be negative square root of three. Okay, so where does that take place? Well, in your unit circle in quadrant two, which would be this guy, that is gonna be at, I believe, two pi, over three, so theta could equal that. Um, theta could also equal whatever angle produces this. So I believe that since this is right past zero down at the very bottom of your unit circle, that would be at five pi over three. So two pi over three, five pi over three, that would be your answer for part B and then theta is pi over six and 11 pi over six. Those would be your answers for A. Okay, so does that help a little bit? Um, moving on to example four, now we are in degrees. 
So we want to make sure to answer accordingly. And we know unit circle angles in both radians and degrees. Even if we report the answer in radians, we're just going to have to convert to degrees or just know what it's equivalent to in degrees. Now when you get a presentation like you have in A here, they're just telling you for sine theta is one half, they're telling you that your y coordinate is going to be positive. And then for cosine theta is less than or equal to zero, unless it actually equals zero, they're telling you that your x coordinate is negative, all right? So your y coordinate is positive, your x coordinate is negative. Um, that implies quadrant two. Okay? So um, they want to know what this is in degrees. So in your unit circle, where y is one half and cosine theta is less than or equal to zero, you're going to have this right here which is 5 pi over 6, but really in degrees, that'll be 150 degrees. So theta is 150 degrees. And that is the only quadrant where y is positive and x is negative. So you don't have a second answer like you did in example 3. So there you go for the first part of example 4. For part b here, you know what? I am not working with secant theta. No way. Um, I don't have a unit circle that's labeled with that, so I'm going to go to cosine. And it's really simple because that's going to be the same thing as cosine theta equals the reciprocal of this, which is 1 over square root of 2. But if I rationalize that, root 2 over root 2, uh, don't I get that cosine at that particular angle is radical 2 over 2. All right, you probably could have figured that out. Then they're telling you that um, cosecant theta is negative root 2. And again, no, not dealing with cosecant. So I'm going to go to sine theta, and that'll be negative square root of 2 over 2. I'm not going to go through the process of actually doing the conversion from 1 over root 2. You've already seen it for cosine. But keep in mind that cosine here is positive and sine here is negative, right? So again, where is that going to happen? Um, that's to the right for x and down from the origin for y. So we're talking about being in quadrant 4, right? And keep in mind that anything with root 2 over 2, so if we make a, an ordered pair out of this, root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2, that's going to be anything with a multiple of 45 degrees. And in quadrant 4, isn't theta going to be equal to 315 degrees? Yes, 7 pi over 4 radians, but 350 degrees. So you're using the signs to determine what quadrant you're in, and then you're using the values to kind of figure out what the ordered pairs are, and, um, and so on. So that's it. That's what you missed. Um, I hope that that helps fill in the blanks, and I will see you tomorrow.